Right, I've got an absolutely S tier Hunter build for you today. Uh, I'm using a Glaive, and I don't know if you remember a couple of seasons ago where we had suppressive Glaive, where we could go invisible on Glaive hits. Well, this build is very similar to that. Uh, and I really wanted to test it out with something really hard, so I've been in the Master Duality, the Master Kettle checkpoint, just to try it out, just to see how long I can survive. I'm actually practicing to do this solo. Uh, I managed to get to two damage phases with this build as well, so it's really, really strong. Uh, the whole build is going to be based around as much invisibility and as much survivability as we can get. I've got absolutely all sorts to show you, and this build is an absolutely an absolute corker. You can literally just go invisible whenever you want. The whole build itself is focusing around one aspect on the hunter. Everything's focused around stylish executioner. Defeating weakened, suppressed, or volatile target is going to grant us invisibility and true sight. So the whole build is based around weakening, suppressing and volatile so we can take full advantage of Stylish Executioner and go invisible whenever we want. One of the ways to proc Stylish Executioner is with suppressing. Suppressing Grenade is an obvious one to do because that suppresses. Not only that, if you run Echo of Undermining it does actually weaken as well so you've got both sort of debuffs going for the Stylish Executioner. So suppressor grenade with undermining. Now another weapon to consider is tractor cannon because this weapon emits a powerful impulse that pushes enemies away and it also suppresses them. So whenever you suppress something, you are going to go invisible with tractor cannon. And the seasonal glaive this season is called ecliptic distaff and this has got some top tier perks for a void hunter. Perks like destabilizing rounds, final blows cause nearby targets to come volatile. Volatile is one of the debuffs we need for our Stylish Executioner and it's also got a pretty nice origin trait on there as well, Vanguard's Vindication, so you can get health on kills as well. And then on top of that we've also got seasonal artifact perks this season like Volatile Fleur, picking up an orb grants our weapons Volatile Rounds. So we've got Suppression, Volatile and the Weakening, that is the three ingredients for Stylish Executioner and these three combined, this is why I max everything out built around that one aspect. Focus my full build around it and you can literally just walk around. You've either got some at suppressed, some at volatile, or you've also got some at weakened. Either way, you literally could take advantage of that stylish execution and go invisible whenever you feel like it. As well as going invisible, we can use Echo of Cessation. Finish your final blows, create a burst of void damage that causes combatants to come volatile and defeating a volatile target also is going to give us a, a void breach as well so more volatile from the finisher for your stylish executioner you can pick that void breach up and you'll notice there i've also got devour going on with echo of starvation picking up a void breach for an orb of power is going to grant us devour so the odd times that we're not invisible we're going to be nice and safe with devour going on and this has saved me quite a few times, especially in this master dungeon. And it's super, super strong, this fragment. Look how good this is. I'm nearly dead. I'm going to pick up that orb. Instant devour. Healed me to full health. That's how strong it is. It's absolutely crazy. So the times that you are invisible, the 15% of the time, you are going to be able to heal like that with devour. We haven't even talked about the exotic yet. Gryfork and Torbeck is an absolutely top tier choice for this build because all that invisibility that you've seen in the clips prior to this, every time you come out of that invisibility, you are going to get volatile rounds to your void weapons, extra damage, and it just works perfectly for Stylish Executioner, plus the extra damage that you get. I just want to touch on this as well, the actual Glaive. Why I run a Glaive in Master Kittle is for this reason blocking damage look at that it's really really handy so another sort of thing just to mention i wanted to sort of say about the glaive as well now for damage uh for master Kittle, what we found is lmgs was really really strong it was a really solid two phase now if you want to one phase it i'd probably recommend tie pans or rocket launchers but if you run a good uh void machine gun you're going to get that volatile rounds as well from your gry falcons and you can also use that machine gun for clearing ads and getting your invisibility with the volatile rounds of course that is if you're not using chat cannon this is just another option now another weapon to consider in here it's absolutely insane is revision zero it's so so good just for clearing 
the rank and file enemies, the scions, or even like the centaurians that spawn, it absolutely rinses them. I did a video on this and it now feels absolutely crazy by the way, revision zero. So that's just another option. Obviously I featured tractor cannon in the beginning of the video, but this is just an option if you don't want to run tractor cannon or your team's already got plenty of debuffs going on. But like I said, good machine gun, something like uh, es escapade retrofit with target lock is super, super strong. Now what I'm going to do is just go over all of my aspects fragments just quickly. Stylish Executioner, which we've already touched on. This is what I focus this full build around, Stylish Executioner. Vanishing Step is the other one I like to run, just a dodge to go invisible. Obviously works well with Gry Falcons. Suppressor or Vortex Grenade, either of them. I tend to stick to Suppressor. Snare Bomb, tri Triple Jump and a Gambler's Dodge. I always run Gambler's Dodge on my builds to dodge when you're an enemy and you're going to get a full smirk back. And don't forget, your snare bomb is actually used as a weakening as well. So whether you use like DPS phases or just for clearing ads to get your invisibility. Echo of cessation, which we've touched on. Echo of undermining for the weakening effect. And echo of starvation, absolutely top tier this one. And then echo of obscurity to make ourselves go invisible on finishes. I'll just quickly go over my armor mods. Now, time dilation, your decaying armor charge has a longer uh, duration. Reaper is a really good mod to run. Because every time you dodge, you use your class ability all the time on this build, you're going to spawn an orb on your next weapon kill. Another one to use uh, quite a lot with is Empowered Finish. Finisher, final blows, grant you one temporary armor charge. So between that and the Reaper, you're going to have loads and loads of armor charges going. On my legs, because I've got all them armor charges, I like to run weapon surges. I've got Voidon on the moment, but you can change them accordingly. I like to run three of them, but you can change them to Stasis Arc, Kinetic, whatever you want. It's just my choice, I stick to Void. Gry Falcon's chest piece on there, what I've got is I've always stick to survivability on my chest pieces. So Concussive Dampener, you get stomped a real lot in this game, especially in this dungeon. I personally hate getting stomped, getting stomped off the map, getting stomped and killed, I find it so boring. So I always run a Concussive Dampener, because if I die to a stomp, I go in the right mood. Then two Solar Resistances, but again, they can be changed accordingly to whatever sort of you're going to get more damage coming at you. On my arms, Font of Vigo, whenever I have an armor charge, it's going to give me a boost to my strength. It's a plus 30. Bolstering Detonation grants class ability when you cause damage with a grenade. And I also like to run Firepower, so my grenade kills get orbs for my armor charges as well. So you're going to get loads of armor charges with your Firepower, Reaper, and the Empowering Finish. And then obviously, like I said, you've got your Firepower as well for orbs, so... Really, really good. And then on my helmet, I like to run Void Kinetic Siphons. Again, these can be alternated to whatever you want. And then I always run a heavy arm, arm, ammo finder as well. So that is the whole video. I'll leave everything sort of at the end anyway. I'll leave a dim link in the video description. I'll leave my uh, loadout playing out. Also, just before you go, let me know what you think of this build. If you think there's any improvements I could make or are you running anything similar, let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, have a great night.